Welcome to this week's episode of Digital Marketing Today. Happy to have David Azell from the Lanyap Group. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Digital Marketing Today. Happy to have David Azell with us today from the Lanyap Group. Uh, branding, messaging, website experts. Um, so happy to have a discussion with you today, hopefully to the benefit of our viewers about what is hot in digital marketing today. Seems like it changes all the time, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> uh, so for the benefit of our viewers, please just give us a little bit of background sure. about David Azell. Oh, and, uh, not, not enough time for that. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, sure. where, where are you from? I mean, where, yeah, what are you up to these days? Give us a little little uh, insight into the Lanyap group. Yeah, for sure. So, um, originally from Louisiana. I was born in South Louisiana in Baton Rouge. Um, but the name Lanyap is a French, Louis, you know, South Louisiana Cajun word. Mm -hmm. And the real spelling has G's and P's and just ridiculous letters that don't need to be there. Right. So, we took the phonetic spelling of L-A-N-Y-A-P. But essentially what it means is a little something extra. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, the encore after the show. Mm -hmm. It's going to a restaurant and the waiter bringing you a, you know, a dessert and he says, try it, it's on the house, working on a new recipe. Mm -hmm. Just kind of makes you feel a different way. So I've always liked kind of what that stands for and what mm -hmm. that means. So we always work with our clients on helping them to figure out how they can do that, not only for their own clients, but also internally. You know, mm -hmm. how can they always strive to do a little bit extra? That's cool. I wonder how many boats are named Lanyap. Then. That's that's the first place that I saw it. <laughs> really? I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember um, being in the car with my mom when I was a kid, going to a baseball game, and just passing by a boat, and it just said Lanyap. And yeah. I couldn't, of course, at that age, I had no clue. I couldn't even spell it. I was like, Glegmia, you know, yeah. crazy letters. But um, as I've gotten older and I've kind of seen what that meaning is, you're yeah. right. I mean, it's just everywhere yeah that's funny my parents lived in baton rouge for a little bit and you know been to oh, been yeah. to new orleans enough you know <laughs> you've or, seen you know, it yeah, more than once now yeah, yeah. So, interesting so um i know that you guys are really focused on you know kind of similar to our business model um even though we're video centric marketing we really focus on the consulting and the strategy side right. of things first before we, well, we like to, before we do any work for anyone. So we know that what we're going to do is, you know, is going to work for them sure. and for their business. Um, and I know that's kind of how you guys operate as well. So let's talk for a bit about just the overall importance of that branding piece mm -hmm. of it. Right. Um, and how that drives kind of the messaging and then, you know, all those other things, all those tools and tactics that come later. Sure. So, I mean, it, your brand just in general, it's always so much more than just a logo, which is what a lot of people think. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I just need a brand really quick and move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, ultimately your brand is what people say about your business when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. And small businesses, as you're getting started, you're bootstrapping and building do what you can to build that consolidated message. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can always hire a team of professionals as you get bigger and as your business evolves. But, mm -hmm. you know, think about it if you have two employees and you're on the 20th floor of a building and you're both on different elevators. And in each elevator is somebody who you want their business. By the time you get all the way down, is that message going to be the same thing? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be saying the same thing that I'm saying and when we talk about our business and how we bring value to our clients. Mm. You know, it's just consistency. It's what people say when you're not around. Yeah. And I think some people, uh, I know a, a you know, mistake that we've seen some people make, particularly small businesses, is they, you know, they, they work on things when they can on the marketing side sure. because they're busy working in the business too. <laughs> right. um, and sometimes you know okay we'll put up a facebook page because we know we need to have a business facebook page and then right. maybe they forget about it for a little while or whatever and then they <laughs> set up this and then they set up their website right. and they're not spending enough time kind of going back and reviewing some of those things and making sure those things are kind of saying the same thing and have like a concise right. and, and a consistent message as well um 
So do you have any kind of just, you know, tips and, you know, or tricks for, sure. you know, for those small business owners about how to stay on top of that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there are a million and a half social channels. There are, you know, blogs, content, all of this stuff that you can be doing when you're talking about digital marketing. Mm. But first, it's really making sure you know your customer. And I mean, know them specifically. Mm. How old are they? Where do they spend their time? What kind of products do they buy? Who do they listen to? All of that kind of stuff, because that kind of information can really help drive my target audience is all on Pinterest and LinkedIn. Mm. They're on Facebook, but they're not making purchasing decisions from Facebook. They're making that from LinkedIn, and they're getting their content and their creative and their information from Pinterest. So mm. that's where I need to spend the bulk of my time. Mm. It's just so much about understanding that instead of just saying, yeah, we're on Twitter. We haven't posted since July of 2017, but we're there. Mm. You're you're not spending any kind of time on it. Mm -hmm. So really understand your audience, take advantage of any kind of analytics when you can, figure out where people are coming to you from, any kind of retargeting, things like that, that can really just help you kind of get that clear and consistent message of where they're coming from. Yeah, um, I think it's really important because a lot of people just kind of, they follow trends mm -hmm. or they go to a meeting or a conference somewhere and somebody's on the stage and Tell them you need to do this. You need to do this, and right. and um, so they just spin their wheels and spend a lot of time and energy and resources. And actually, for a small business owner, time is one of the most valuable resources that they have. Right, <laughs> it's huge. You know, yeah. um, and um, you know, a lot of times that you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. when they do that and they don't get results, and they're like, "Well, that doesn't work for me," mm -hmm. and when it may not have been exactly the right kind of tactic to use. You, got you it. know, you got so. It. And there's no, there's no silver bullet. There's no do this and it'll solve all of your mm. problems or your strategies or any of that. It's a lot of let's try this, let's give it a concerted effort, let's figure out how we can measure it, mm. see what's working and see what isn't, pivot a little bit. You know, mm. I mean, it's all about making sure that you're staying on top of what's driving your business and not just, well, I'm on Twitter and I posted last week, let's hope somebody shows up because it doesn't work that way. Right. Really being intentional of finding out what's working and what isn't. So um, I know you've worked with a lot of different types of businesses. So I guess um, I'll ask a lead-in question, and maybe we'll come back and have a little bit of a, of a more in-depth conversation after we take a, a short break. But okay. just to lead into it, um, so different types of businesses, like particularly from a, uh, from a website perspective, right? So. Mm -hmm. We already have some of that branding in place and kind of already developed some messaging based on who that target audience is. But let's say like a service-based, like direct-to-consumer service-based business uh, versus like a business-to-business -business services sure. business, right? Or, um, I mean, we won't even necessarily touch e-commerce from now because that's like it's... a it's, whole other thing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's its whole animal. Yeah. But just as, as kind of a lead into a more in-depth discussion about that, what are kind of, if it's like B2C versus B2C, I'm B2B, and maybe they're both service-based businesses, like how do, you, how do you set up that approach as far as helping somebody like develop a website and the, and the messaging behind that? Sure. So everything is, I mean, the first place we always start is what are, you know, what are their goals, not only short-term but long-term? How are they going to get back there? How is everything going to be measured? Um, because especially something that's B2C, you have to give a finite amount of time that you have their attention. So if your main call to action, let's say it's a, you're selling a product, if that's your main call to action is the selling of that product, don't have it four scrolls down your website before there's a call to action to buy this product. Mm -hmm. You know, walk them through a story, but give them the option to purchase along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, so that everything starts to become backed up. Don't make them go hunt for how they can do business with you. Mm -hmm. Think of it like a newspaper. Every, all of your heading information and the most important thing is at the top and everything else starts to scroll down. Mm -hmm. That way, if you have them for three seconds, they know what you sell, they know how they can buy it. Maybe they're not ready to right now, mm -hmm but they didn't have to go hunt and peck through four pages of your site and mm -hmm. tons of content before they found what you want them to. Yeah. So it's just being strategic in how you lead them through that journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and a lot of, especially small businesses, when they start kind of with the website building, it's that whole, here's all of my content. 
they kind of show up and throw up, for mm. lack of a better term, yeah. you know. And so their content is all over the place. So we'll a lot of times work with them on strategy and hierarchy. What's most important? What's second? What's third? What's mm. fourth? Um, sometimes supporting content can be on another page. It doesn't have to be something that's right up at front, you know. Just right. kind of walk them through, and it's all about the, the UI and the UX, the mm. user experience. Mm. What do they experience when they come to your site? Mm. Is it all on mobile phone? You know, I mean, that's why analytics play such a huge role. Sure. With our site, actually, I mean, we have like 80% of our traffic comes on desktop. Mm -hmm. So we think about that whenever we design our site to make sure that it's more desktop friendly than mobile, even though mobile is, is great and that's fine. And if those roles were reversed, you just have to make sure you know that. Cool. Well, there's a lot more to dive into with that, but we're gonna do it on the flip side right now. We're gonna take a short break and hear from our sponsor for today. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Adults in the U.S. consume five and a half hours of video content every day, almost one and a half hours on digital devices. 64% of consumers say that watching a marketing video has influenced a purchasing decision. Adding video to a website landing page can increase conversion by up to 80%. Are you ready to win with video marketing? Now is your chance to learn. Easy steps to add video to your current marketing. Why a three-tiered video content strategy is best. Best practices for live video on social media. Pros and cons of professional versus DIY video. And tips for getting better results with video. Gain the confidence to grow your business and brand with video marketing. Request your speaker today. back at Digital Marketing Today, here today with David Azell from the Lanyup Group. So before our break, uh, we were talking about the importance of uh, the user experience uh, when a prospect or a visitor comes to your website, what kind of experience are you going to offer them? And how quickly are you going to give them the opportunity to actually make that purchase or, or whatever your call to action is. So I'm going to throw a softball question to you. <laughs> <Best kind. laughs> um, so with trends that you're seeing, uh, you know, with the analytics that you see on a daily basis and, and trends that you're seeing, what kind of role does visual and video content play in that, in that user experience? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's huge. Even, even with our site now, we're introducing some new services to make to add more value to some of our clients. And that's the first thing that we need to do. After we've built out our new pages, we need to have some video testimonials, video content, so that people can start to engage with that. Mm -hmm. Because then if a potential <clears throat> client comes to our site, if they're halfway interested, they scroll down and then they see a video of somebody that is in their same position business-wise, you know, just getting started, growing their business, and then they watch a quick 30-second video from Cheryl in New Jersey who is talking about the benefits that we made to her business, that other person is going to say, yeah, I'm in the same boat as Cheryl is, you know, that's, so it can go a long way in helping us to close that new business. Mm -hmm. and, and it is huge, you know, attention spans are getting smaller. Um, I mean, everybody knows Instagram, LinkedIn, especially like LinkedIn Live and all of that stuff now, Facebook still, they spend all their time with video. Mm -hmm. And that's, I don't see that trend slowing down for a long time. Well, I know a guy if he needs some. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I do. <laughs> um, so, you know, kind of before the break, you know, when we're, uh, we were focused kind of on the, on the B2C side, you know, like particularly if you're selling a product, you know, giving people a chance to, to you know, to go ahead and make that purchase decision if they're ready, right. and if not, kind of lead them through, um, you know, information until they're ready to do that. On the B2B side, I would assume that you have kind of a little bit longer cycle, and it's more totally. about kind of like building trust, authority, and kind of you know, and kind of building that relationship up a little bit. So how does that um, differ from the strategy side of it as far as the website goes? Yeah, I think with the B2B side, you have a little bit more time where you can focus more on content. Um, 
on that standpoint, you know, the sales cycle typically takes a little bit longer. Um, investing in white papers, downloads, ebooks, things like that, to where typically those things are at a larger price point as mm -hmm. well as you know, instead of on the B to the B to C side. Um, so giving them content that they can really sink their teeth into. So every different step through that sales cycle, they're reading and educating themselves about your product and about your product. Mm -hmm. And you're right. You know, it's so much more about the one-on-one -on -one relationships and making sure that those two businesses are congruent. Mm -hmm. What about like, uh, you know, as tools or tactics, uh, like specific landing pages, mm -hmm. like auto capture, I mean, you know, like uh, sure. CRM kind of, you know, back, back systems, things like that. How, how important are those things? <laughs> Absolutely huge. Yeah. Um, and a lot of small business owners that we work with, especially ones that are solopreneurs, you know, one or two people, something like that, sometimes we'll, just in our initial conversations, we'll talk about CRMs and their eyes glaze over. Mm. And these are the same people that you'll see at networking events, and they'll leave with a stack of business cards, and they'll end up on their desk just sitting there. It's like, well, I got all of these business cards, but nobody's called me. You know, so, I mean, making sure that you've invested in the right CRM, whether it's HubSpot, Salesforce, Zoho, there are several of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's huge because then that becomes your virtual Rolodex of everybody you've met. So let's say you don't follow up with somebody you met at, a, at an event. It's a month down the road. Maybe on that day, they were telling you that their son was graduating high school. Awesome. You know, if you have CRM, you can log that in so that a month later, I'm not going to just remember that off the cuff, you know, mm -hmm. that their son was graduating. But if I look in my CRM and I have a date that's already set where I need to send them an email and it says, last time I met them, they told me their son was graduating high school. Perfect. Now, mm -hmm. it just helps you to be able to kind of communicate and understand your clients and your customers, the sales process, everything. And from a landing page standpoint, I mean, that's huge as well, you know, mm -hmm. giving them some gated content, mm -hmm. something that they can sink their teeth into so that they can learn more about your business, but at the same time, you're getting their email address. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just all a process. And that's the biggest thing that even my business coach tells me now, you know, it's like plan the work and work the plan. Mm -hmm. Don't get over invested. Don't think you have to do a, everything. Figure out where your people are, figure out how you can add the most value and just work that plan. So um, what are some of the like, particularly on like the automation side, um, you know, some of these CRM tools, they do have some marketing automation, you know, aspects built into them. So like for, you know, for instance, like a small business owner that doesn't have like a, you know, a Salesforce budget, sure. you know, to spend on a monthly basis, or there are a couple of tools or whatever that you really like that are, that are good for those types of businesses? Sure, so on the social media side, um, things like Hootsuite are great because you can plan out all of your content that you're gonna send through all the channels, Facebook, you know, Twitter, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. You can plan it out once and it does it the rest of the week or the rest of the month. It just mm -hmm. does it on its own. Um, and then everything else, like when it goes back to the CRM, we use HubSpot mm -hmm. and HubSpot, I mean, look, I'm, I'm a proponent of using anything I can find for free until it just doesn't make any sense anymore and I need to go up. Yeah. And HubSpot, you can use it right now for free up to, let's say, 10,000 contacts. So you, within HubSpot, you can not only manage your CRM, but you can also build out your own drip campaigns. Mm -hmm. So that if you send out an email and somebody clicks on a link to download something, you can set it to where two days later they get a follow-up email that says whatever you want. And then right. five days later, based on if they took action on that, it either does this or it does that. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that you can do. Just take a little time, but if, if you're only doing that kind of thing and not focused on all the other things going on, mm. you can really focus on that and it can make you appear bigger than what you are, mm. but also get all of that information that a team of four or five would do manually. Right, and I'm sure you could probably help somebody set oh, all sure. that stuff up, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Well, we just, I mean, we always like giving people an idea that there are, you know, some tools out there. I mean, it's like anything else. There's a lot of things that are either free or inexpensive yeah. to, to start using that are applicable for a lot of people, but it's still right. just 
it takes some effort and a little bit of a learning curve to set that up if somebody's going to try to do it for themselves. Totally. You know, as opposed to, you know, paying somebody, right. you know, who's an expert in doing those things. Right. So. And the thing is, really, it just takes some getting in there and spending time in it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's WordPress or HubSpot or any of it, mm -hmm. it, it, you'll never figure it out in five minutes. Just, you know, devote an hour. Just get in there, play around with it. You're not going to mess anything up. Mm -hmm. And just start to get familiar with it. You know. Cool. So we're going to wrap things up here in a second, but I want to make sure that we give you an opportunity to tell people how they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. Thank and you. Uh, and learn more directly, you know, about your services and what you might be able to do for them. So sure. you want to tell everybody how to how to reach you? For sure. So as you'll see right now on the screen, you can check us out at the lanyapgroup.com. That's L A N Y A P dot com. Um, we're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram under the same, the Lanyap Group. Okay. So you're not going to make us actually spell out the whole word to be able to find your <laughs> URL. That right? original name was scrapped after the first week. My business coach said, okay, well, I know that your website is out there. I've searched. I can't spell it. Something's got to change. So. All right. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, I hadn't blown too much money buying a domain, and that right. one was available, yeah. so we went with it. Well, it's always good to have the domain in, ca in case you uh, have a Cajun who's oh. like looking for your, and they happen to spell it right. Right, in case right. they spell yep. it the right, right. way. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's another tip. <laughs> Make sure your URL is easy to see, easy That's to spell, it. right? Easy to spell, easy to say on the phone. Right. Yeah, you got it. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for being here it's today. Re yeah, really appreciate your time, and you thank it. you all for joining us. And joining us next week on Tuesday at 2 p.m. for the next episode of Digital Marketing Today. We'll see you next time.